Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today I've got an absolute whopper in my hands because the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus has arrived at Techspert Towers. Does it really need an introduction? It's a big mother version of the S22. So let's whip it on out of the box, take you on a full on tour of the hardware and the software and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So first up, what do you actually get bundled in the box? And I don't know about you kiddies, but I get the feeling this section is going to be rather bloody short. Well, you've got yourself one Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus, and you've got yourself a Porky Pin device, and one Type-C to Type-C USB cable. And as usual, that is your whack. You'll have to provide your own adapter and everything. So Samsung is releasing the Galaxy S22 Plus as well as the standard S22 on March the 11th here in the UK. It'll cost you 949 quid for the base 128 gig model, rising to a cool grand if you want double the storage. And while the standard S22 is a pleasingly compact Wii more for, the S22 Plus rocks a more typical smartphone build at 6.6 .6 inches. Samsung hasn't really changed up the design too much for the S22 generation, or at least aesthetically. From a quick glance, you'd be easily forgiven for mistaking this thing for an S21 Plus. One of the only giveaways is the fact that you get slightly flatter edge in here on the S22 Plus, and it also comes in a slightly different range of colours as well. Black, white, green, and a sort of subtle shade of pink, which is what I've got here. However, while the S22 Plus may not look any different, the actual materials that have gone into the construction have changed up quite considerably. So gone is the glastic arse end from the S21. What you've got now is Gorilla Glass Victus on the back end as well as the front end. And that's both good and bad. That glass finish definitely gives the S22 Plus a more premium feel than previous generations because that glastic, it did feel a little bit cheap. However, the good thing about the Glastic Arsen was it didn't scratch up at all, no matter how many times you put it in your pocket with keys and coins and other bits as well. Whereas the Gorilla Glass Victor screen on the old S21, that scratched up pretty badly, so I'm kind of hoping the same doesn't happen to the back end and the front end of the S22+. Plus. On the plus side, haha, <laughs> see what I did there, uh, the Gorilla Glass Victus finish does mean that the S22 Plus should be shatterproof if you drop it onto hard floor. And I did actually already drop the uh, standard S22 onto hard floor from about head height during my hands-on session with those bad boys, and it was absolutely fine, so yeah. And Samsung has also added a tougher armor aluminium edging to the S22 range, and the S22 Plus is fully IP68 water and dust resistant as usual. And yeah, the design hasn't really changed up too much at all. You've got a very similar looking camera chassis housed here in the top corner, not completely seamlessly blending in with that edge, and unfortunately there is a clear seam there. It's a proper heavy more for 196 grams, and as I said before, 6.6 .6 inches, so a proper hand filler as well. Still comfortable to clutch, but using it one-handed, good friggin' luck. As for the SIM tray, well, there's space for two SIMs simultaneously, chortle, chortle, but no room for a micro SD memory card. So let's shift on to software from the hardware, and what you've got here is Samsung's very own One UI 4.1 launcher squatting on top of Android. Samsung fans will be right at home. It's your usual setup, absolutely packed with extra features on top of the standard Android shiz. While also bringing the best of Android 12 here. So for instance, the excellent privacy features are present and correct. You can fast toggle the camera and microphone access for all apps if you want to. And when you actually load up an app that uses the camera or the mic, you'll get a handy little indicator in this top corner here. You can drag down that notifications bar and get some more information on what app is using your camera. Unsurprisingly, it's the camera in this case, and then you can change up the permissions if you don't want that thing happening. Well, Samsung's Knox security features takes all your sensitive bits, so to speak, and isolates them so they can't be directly attacked, your passwords, your biometric data, etc. So if security is a big issue for you, then Samsung smartphones definitely among the best out there, along with the likes of the Google Pixel smartphones. You've got great customization in One UI as well. So for instance, dive into wallpaper and style. You can change up that wallpaper and everything as usual, but you'll also see the new color palette option as well, which is part of Android 12. And this can actually change up the theme and colors based on the wallpaper you've got installed at the time. You've got the usual always on display options as well. I like to schedule that so it only comes on when I'm awake. You've got a small range of digital and analog options with uh, the ability to change up the color scheme as well. Otherwise, you can just bung on an image, including one of those AR emojis, if you happen to be six years old, and jump on into advanced features. And that's where you find lots of the bonus Samsung One UI bits as well, including the Samsung 
DeX if you want to basically set up your smartphone as a makeshift computer. You can adjust the sides key or the power button basically so you can wake Bigsby or actually use it as a power button. And you can also quick launch the camera with a quick double push as well, quite handy. And you get the feeling that one-handed mode is going to come in pretty bloody handy considering this is the plus model as well. Absolute bloody godsend if you've got stumpy wee thumbs like me. But anywho, I have actually done a full dedicated video on One UI 4, so definitely go check that out if you want an in-depth look at all the new features and all my favourite bits. And for now, I will stop banging on about it. Uh, as far as the security goes as well, before I forget, you've got an ultrasonic in-display fingerprint sensor here on the Galaxy S22 Plus, and so far, in my sort of 24 hours of testing this bad boy out, it's been absolutely fine, perfectly responsive. Works alright if your hands are a little bit grubby or moist, but, uh, but not excessively so. And this is backed up with a tasty bit of face recognition as well. And as you can see, there are plenty of different options you can play around with to either speed up the process or make it more secure. No matter what options you set, it doesn't work if you're wearing a face mask, but otherwise it seems, again, pretty quick and reliable. Oh, apart from that one time, obviously. If we scroll on down to the battery and device care section of the settings, you'll find uh, the likes of the storage in here. You've got a choice of either 128 or 256 gigs of storage with the S22+. Plus. I've already used a terrifying amount of that and I haven't even begun to shoot photos and videos on this thing at the time I'm shooting this. I've literally downloaded a few apps. Definitely not helped by the fact that 31 gigs is given to system files. Ouch. Especially worrying considering it's not expandable via micro SD memory cards. Now the display is always a highlight on these Sami blows and what you've got here on the S22 Plus is a 6.6 .6 inch dynamic AMOLED display. Perfectly flat as you can see there. And I've got to say, I'm really enjoying the panel here on the S22 Plus so far. The visuals are nice and crisp, despite the fact it is a good size. As usual, the screen mode is set to vivid by default, and I'm quite happy to just leave it on that because I really love the punchy output, which doesn't go to extremes. It just makes, you know, animation and like look really, really poppy and beautiful. Nice sharp contrast as well because it's an AMOLED panel, so really deep, dark blacks and crisp whites as well. And I'll certainly be testing out Samsung's new Vision Booster feature for my in-depth review. This can tweak the colour and the contrast output so it matches the environmental light, just making those darker images easier to see. The screen is also brighter than Samsung's previous generation panels and you can really tell when you go outdoors everything is so, so clear. This is it here on the maximum manual brightness level and it's positively eye searing. Dive into the display settings, you've got the usual eye comfort shields and all the other bits that you can play around with as well. And if you head to motion smoothness, you'll see you have the option of keeping it at the standard 60 hertz rate if you just want to preserve your battery life, or you can leave it on adaptive, which actually scales it up from 10 hertz all the way up to 120 hertz. And certainly One UI feels super smooth on that adaptive setting. You can't really appreciate it, unfortunately, on this video because I've got it set to 25p. But just take Uncle Spurt's word for it, it's proper lush. But what about the audio? Well, of course, as you would expect from a premium blow, the Samsung S22 Plus sports a stereo speaker setup. Looking for a great affordable handset? Well, I've had my sim slapped in here for the last week or so. Here's my in-depth review. And for more of the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. And yeah, on top volume, that'll absolutely do the job. Even in the loudest, most terrifying environment, something like a child soft play for instance should still be able to clearly hear everything that is going on quality is pretty decent as well reasonable clarity not much in the way of equiness or tinniness or professional terms of course sadly no headphone jack as usual here on the s22 plus you will have to rely on the bluetooth 5.2 smarts if you want to get connected i guess use one of those god awful dongle thingies now running the show here on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus and indeed the entire S22 family is Samsung's fresh new Exynos 2200 chipset. And it's backed here in the Plus by 8 gigs of RAM, that's the only variant you'll get here in the UK. And I've got to say those Samsung Exynos SOCs, they do tend to disappoint a bit compared with the likes of the Snapdragon 800 series for instance. And as always Samsung is making big bold claims when it comes to the 2200. You've got all kinds of crazy graphical features packed in there including the likes of ray tracing and support and after around 24 hours i've got to say zero complaints on the everyday performance apps just load up the instant you tap them certainly no uh, little stumbles or judders or anything like that if you are a benchmarking fan well the geekbench results pretty respectable overall the kind of numbers you would expect from a premium smartphone but not as strong as a snapdragon 8 gen 1 handset which i recently tested but of course, benchmarks, pff, bunch of numbers, that doesn't really tell you anything, to be perfectly honest. What you need is real life experience. And what I'm going to do now actually is dive on into a bit of Genshin Impact and give that a go. 
So in what is doubtlessly one of the toughest, most arduous tasks in my role as tech YouTube dickhead, I took it upon myself to spend a good hour or so playing Genshin Impact. One of the most graphically taxing and just all round demanding Android titles, definitely a serious test of any smartphone's grunt. And of course, because the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus is a flagship premium smartphone, I bumped the graphic settings all the way up to the maximum level, the highest setting, at 60 frames per second. And on the old S21 phones, uh, they, they definitely struggled with Genshin Impact on those maxed out settings. It was a real disappointment. And on the S22 Plus, I did see the odd tiny little drop in frame rate, but certainly nothing as severe. And I've got to say, Genshin Impact did remain perfectly playable on those maxed out settings. And while the S22 Plus and the Exynos 2200 in general isn't the best performer out there as far as the gaming grunt goes, I've got to say, after an hour of playing Genshin Impact, smacking the living crap out of a whole bunch of goblin-y thingies and getting twatted by big buggers with shields, the S22 Plus was only just starting to get a little bit toasty. It remained pleasingly cool even under duress, so that is definitely an advantage over some of its Snapdragon rivals. And as usual, you've got Samsung's Game Booster feature, which can be called into action by dragging down the notifications bar and tapping like so. And while this doesn't pack in quite as many features as densely as some rivals, like sort of uh, MIUI and Color OS, for instance, you've got the major stuff in there. You've got like the priority mode, which can block notifications and keep you in the game, stop getting distracted or anything. And you can also call up uh, the likes of WhatsApp and uh, YouTube as well in a mini window. So hey, you can uh, enjoy a good bit of text burn action while you're getting your Genshin on or more likely watch a video walkthrough of whichever bit of the game it is you're stuck in. And of course, it's uh, it's not ideal. Personally, I'd just come out of the game momentarily, go into YouTube, check it out, and then come back into the game, but whatever. So if you are a gamer, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus should certainly satisfy. But what will be interesting to see is how many Android titles emerge in the next sort of 12 months or so, say, that actually support the ray tracing and all the proper gaming chops that that Exynos chipset throws at you. And of course, the Exynos also uh, gives you a good bit of 5G support as well, not just sub-6, of course, as you'd expect from a premium smartphone. You've got Wi-Fi 6E support on there as well, so that supports the 6 gigahertz band as well as the standard ones. So good news if you've got a Wi-Fi 6E router, Mr. Posh Pants, or Mrs. Posh Pants. We want to be inclusive, of course, here on Techspurs. And while personally, I would probably go for the standard Galaxy S22 over Samsung's plus-sized model. I got to say, one reason I would probably actually err towards the plus is the fact you've got the bigger battery stuffed in here, 4,500 milliamps compared with the 3,700 in the standard S22. So hopefully the Plus should be able to keep you going all day on a single charge, no worries. Although if you are a gamer, take note that Genshin Impact drains almost a third of the battery in about an hour. But at least the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus does deliver 45 watt wired charger now, which is a definite step up from the crappy old 25 watt wired charging. So it doesn't take an eternity to power it back up again. And of course, you've got 15 watt wireless charging on this bad boy as well. It's the usual Qi standard. So if you've got a wireless charging pad lying around, chances are it'll work fine here with the S22 Plus. And as usual, you've got wireless power sharing support as well. So if you've got accessories like the Galaxy Buds or a Galaxy Watch, for instance, you can snap it on the back of this phone, just turn on the wireless power sharing and it will beam electricity magically to your accessories to power them up on the go. Now, as usual, let's finish up this unboxing of the Galaxy S22 Plus with a squint at the camera tech. And what you've got here is an improved, upgraded 50 megapixel primary shooter with that optical image stabilization built in. And it's good to see that improvement in the hardware because it certainly made a difference to the Google Pixel 6 versus the Pixel 5, especially in low light scenarios, which is what Samsung is touting as one of the strengths of the S22 series. Of course, as usual, you've got Samsung's AI smarts chucked on here as well, and a whole bunch of toggles you can play around with the likes of the motion photo if you want to bring your photo gallery to life. And lots of bonus modes you can swap to as well, including the portrait mode. Oh, that's a little bit close up on Veronica, slightly terrifying. And this allows you to change up the background bokeh style effect just to help your subject really stand out. And apparently portrait mode works better with pets now as well. And you've got the usual enormous selection of bonus modes to choose from, including some of my favorites like good old single take mode. Great if you've got kids or pets and you wanna shoot photos, videos, you don't really know what you wanna do with them, but you just basically just tap the button, hold the camera on them for about 15 seconds and you get all kinds of different results. You've got the food mode if you want to snap your M&S sandwich before you scoff it down. You've got your uh, pro mode as well, of course, which allows you to manually tweak all kinds of different settings. 
And here's just a small selection of some of the sample photos that I've taken with the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus in my time with it. As you can see, some really nice portrait results are there. Certainly seems very good for shooting living subjects, even in fairly ambient light. They don't tend to come out blurred unless they're really flapping about. And yes, the really low light shots certainly seem uh, a marked improvement over the S21 range as well. So definitely more detail packed in there, more natural looking colors too. As well as your 50 megapixel primary shooter, you've also got your 12 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter if you want a more pulled back view. And this does have somewhat of an impact on the natural tones that you get from that primary sensor. Not quite as realistic looking shots here on the ultra wide angle, but definitely not bad at all. And last up, there's a 10 megapixel telephoto shooter with three times optical zoom and built in optical image stabilization. So if you want to get closer to your subject, this will definitely do the job. Although I wouldn't punch in more than about sort of 10 times overall because once you get past that level things start to look quite grainy and one of the strengths of samsung smartphones when it comes to the optics is the video chops and here on the galaxy s22 plus you can once again shoot up to 4k resolution footage at 30 or 60 frames per second and you do have an 8k option at 24 frames per second frankly i think that's kind of overkill i tend to just leave it on that ultra hd setting and again, here's a bit more sample action shot on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus just out and about in London. As you can see, nice crisp details, really strong visuals there. Not too put off by stronger lighting either. And in more ambient light, yeah, we'll do the job. Yeah. And then finally around the front of the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus you have your basic bog standard 10 megapixel selfie shooter. I'm going to go for natural colour tones for my selfies because frankly bright will probably just make me even more translucent than I already am. And as usual you can have your wide angle view if you've got lots of friends you want to pack in. Come on Veronica let's, uh, let's get you in on this one. And the results seem very similar to last year's S21 to be perfectly honest. Reasonably natural skin tones, plenty of crisp detail packed in there. A little bit too much if you ask me. So there you have it you lovely folk. That in a nutshell is the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus. And certainly if you like them big and you uh, really value your battery life then I would say the plus size is probably the way to go over the standard S22 even though it is a bit of a leap up in price. What do you guys reckon? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. Got a lot of new smartphones coming up in the next couple of weeks with MWC lurking on the horizon like a big evil bastard. Uh, so yeah, so it'd be great to hear from you guys anyway. Please do uh, pop subscribe and ding that. Did I already say that? I'm going absolutely mental. That's how many unboxings I've done this week alone. Uh, yeah, have a good one. Cheers. Bye.